recently I was reading more of Pierre Teilhard de Chardin's books, and I love his view of the cosmos and of Christianity. It's very simple, but literally gets to the heart of the thing, and very beautiful. And it's really funny because he and I are arriving, or in his case have arrived, at similar views of the cosmos as alive and as a spirit and as contained like in Christ, and even like the emphasis on the idea of the heart, but from like opposite directions. Because for me, I was always like in my head and always more focused, more completely focused on like the spiritual and language and like in my religion it's always, it was and in a sense like there's always sort of the spiritual aspect that comes first rather than the body or rather than matter and then even more recently that sort of filtered down and I can see how the material world and the body participate in this and but it's always like down and then most of my spiritual development is still uh, how do you say it? it's through the means of deepening my language and new meanings in words and connections between words I'm very much about words but Pierre like since he was a child he was always obsessed with finding the most consistent the most absolute like piece of matter that he could and possessing that and like iron or like rocks and um, not wanting it to be in any way corrupt or like corruptible and just consistency and I guess he and I do share that when I was little I remember being really well I collected rocks but it was more like in a collection way like he talked about being sort of the inferior version of this sense of consistency in nature but um for me, I do remember being really bothered by anything that would die, or like by flowers dying. I didn't want for anyone to give me flowers because they would just die. I was like, I want to have like fake flowers or like rocks because they were fake. And then, um, and still even now, like I would like, I would prefer like a cube of something or like some solid shape to something with a lot of little breakable parts and like little narrow parts. I just remember these Minecraft minifigures, and there's one of like a slime, and there's one of like bats that were just on a, like a little sticks, and I was like, didn't like the bat slime and stuff. And that, I don't know, that's still part of my taste, I guess. But I guess that is one connection, is the wanting, wanting something incorruptible and something permanent, and being bothered by corruption and by like death, essentially, in the world. I think that predilection, at least in me, is... One of the reasons why I'm particularly a Christian and into that world view because a lot of what Christianity highlights is the feeding of of death and complete transformation of that. But anyway, Pierre, he was always looking for like stone and that and then when he would be taught religion, he couldn't connect at all with the idea of spirit or like God as spirit or transcendent, but it was always more about matter and finding ways to understand it in terms of matter and then slowly in searching for the ultimate consistence of nature, um, he was led to like life and he was led to human beings even though we seem so transient. And he was led to like spirit and in the end what he identified as the Christ. Um, my terms for he sort of gives you like layers of the cosmos that he describes are the, the spiritual realm, like the pattern realm, right? And especially if you think of angels as patterned, I think. So the pattern realm, and then lower there is the matter, excuse me, realm of matter, and like potentiality and all of this. And then the confluence of them both, or like what really exists, I guess, is the mattering realm, which both 
combine sort of the words matter and pattern because it is, right? Everything that exists is both matter and spirit. It's like a confluence of matter and spirit. Um, and also in being like a process because what is is constantly in a state of change and transformation and becoming and as Pierre says, cosmogenesis. Um, and then matter and this is how things have meaning is not by being pure spirit or not by being pure like substance but by being a body embodying a certain pattern and a certain spirit so the pattern realm and the matter realm and the mattering realm and pierre in specifies that cosmogenesis is he one of the things that really is beautiful to me about him is the way that he seems to have just lived in a nice little bubble like in a positive sense and passed through a lot of things unscathed. Speaking of, um, as I was in that other video, like protection and taking circumstances differently and things working for good. I mean, he fought in World War One, which I consider just like the, I just, it depresses me so much to think about. But he fought and he went into it and he came out of it and he like learned a lot through it. And not that he didn't suffer, I'm sure, but he came out, I would say like unscathed spiritually and also the science and evolution and all these concepts he takes in a completely, as completely good and like not seeing, oh, it's technology and we're like falling away from the initial connection with source. We're not like, he's very optimistic about it and almost with a sort of innocence, some sort of childlike, just like wonder in the new technologies and like seeing how humanity is coming together and seeing it in a hopeful way and the modern progress in a hopeful way, which I really like because I spend a lot of time in the views of people who would consider only the element of modernity as like a falling away from God or from the source and as a negative thing. But Pierre, he understood it all as good. And I love that. But anyway, he thinks about evolution and cosmogenesis and says specifically that he perceives, so everything's in this state of change, right? But the question is, which force is predominant, the force of entropy and dissolution or the force of coalescence that produces, you know, stars and then like life and like conscious life and he says it is clear to him that it is the life producing force that is victorious or that is predominant and that matter the direction of of matter and the direction of the universe is not towards finally darkness and entropy and oblivion but rather is toward rising and being converted into spirit and being uh what is the word? Amorized, but like made alive. And um, I, I can't, by the way, read him in the original French. My French is not good enough. Um, but yeah, that the direction of it is toward life and toward unity instead of the common view of just like, well, the heat death of the universe, and that's what we're heading towards, and maybe we can make meaning of it for a little while. That's sort of arbitrary, and it's going to all be heat death. Which is sort of hard to swallow, uh, I don't know, I'm still battling with materialism, it seems. but this is what he says, and I do take his word for it, and sort of see, I sort of see what he means, but how I've put it is that matter is falling in love, because it's a succinct phrase, and so falling in the sense of that's the natural tendency of matter and of the universe is to go in this direction and in love, as in love being uh, that which holds things together and holds things in good shelves and in more and more all, all, all embracing and wider um, and more concentrated good shelves and holds, holds and categories in community. So matter is falling in love. Um, and he talks about the relationship of or the principles, or if you will, angels, but the principles of, of course, least effort and like maximum simplicity, which we can see always. But there's another principle also, which you see, which is that of maximum arrangement. So that over the eight eons, um, uh, yeah, uh, but over the eons, we go from raw to like plants to animals to people you know and, and 
atoms, like molecules, and more and more and more, like a vortex of more concentration. And I think those two ideas are, they seem paradoxical at first when you say that it's both a maximum arrangement and maximum simplicity. So the idea of a, well, speaking of bodies embodying juxtapositions, this is like literally a self-defining example of that. So the concept of a gestalt combines those two. Because a gestalt is a whole that is both, that is simpler than its parts. But also, of course, a whole that is made up of many parts, therefore that is more complex than any of those individual parts. So maximum arrangement, maximum simplicity produces the gestalt. And I guess that is the manner in which matter is falling in love. And in which matter is mattering. Um, This is a random, well, okay, maybe I should also say the other movement in his works, he talks about the god of the above, which is like the transcendent god of especially Western Christianity, where God is like in this, his completely own realm and above everything versus the god of the ahead. And especially in the 20th century, this thing of like progress and humanity moving towards this glorious future. And he says those were combined for him, the God of the above and the God of the ahead. And then you think of how uh, there's the idea in scripture of like the eon above or the age above, and of course ages and worlds and how age and world is sort of like the same term. And so I think, well, I have a sort of schema in my head of like the eon above coming down like rain sort of every moment, raindrops streaming, moments. Um, this is from the Oh Hello song, New River, which is a significant song in my life, and so it's a sort of, well, I have metaphorical threads that make this a natural way to think of things. Like the eon above coming down every moment and sort of, right, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, and that the kingdom is being created and produced each moment from the on above down. And, but I guess that's it's both emergence and emanation. It, anyway, yeah. So matter becoming spirit and the god of the above and the god of the head. And there is this beautiful, one of the things that I love, one of the images that I love in Christianity is that of the kingdom being within and sort of being manifest at every moment. Well, more and more and concentrating and gathering, but being manifest at every moment and in sort of the heart of everything. Uh, if the world is charged with the grandeur of God, it will shine out like, it will flame out like shining from ship foil. It gathers to a great mist like the age of old. Top things. One of the few poets I actually read despite being so into poetry. I don't know why I don't read it. I was at a river once and I was thinking and I was thinking about how the development of life and like self, especially more self-conscious self life in the cosmos or in a cosmos is sort of analogous to the development of language in like a baby or a child. So like you have suddenly these words that concentrate kind of like elements of the universe and really bring them together. Suddenly there's a word when you're self-conscious. No, I don't know. But, um, which is similar to, like, suddenly having these bodies and, like, these lives in the universe which mirror it and which reenact in a microcosmic way the pattern, the wider pattern. And all of this worldview and vision of the cosmos gives me some hope to think about well, I, it gives me some hope to think about the world like from an evolutionary perspective because that means is that for ages and ages and ages in this cosmos there was just like, it was just like stars and then planets and then you know just like water and really, well dead, I mean in a sense, or at least certainly more dead than now. Like there were ages before there was such a thing as life. And then ages before there was such a thing as, or before there was the level of self-consciousness that we have as humans today. 
and say that there was some being that was seated in one of those ages and ages before who had some sort of vision of or idea of well maybe someday there will be this thing called life and like instead of just these mountains like moving and sort of geology it would be faster than that and like more concentrated and like move around by itself and have its own little stars inside of it and whatever and you could think of all of the other angels or whatever was around back then just like laughing and being like whatever that's ridiculous look at this there's never been anything like that clearly it's not happening and honestly took forever before such a thing did emerge but eventually did emerge and like the contrast between like life a universe with like life in it and then like a universe with humans and self-conscious life in it or like that level of self-consciousness i'm still wondering what's going on with animals and trees they won't tell me mm. but um it's like such a contrast that if you've been standing before there it would be you'd probably be very skeptical skeptical as to whether a thing such a thing could or would emerge so then prophecies of something like the kingdom or some idea of life being together in harmony and like death being removed and corruption being removed and time being transformed so that it is no longer subject to death or like pre predominantly defined by like death and no longer just linear like all these things that we now look at and go like mm, how I don't know greater, more cataclysmic changes have happened in this universe before. And one could believe and could see that those potentialities are inherent in the world we have today, just as if there was like a visionary enough mind looking at the earlier universe, ages before life emerged or before um, humanity emerged, they might be able to discern a first few threads of potentiality for such thing emerging. And I guess that's what it's about, is discerning those good threads and then feeding them, and find the life and feed it.